Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you a story so you can all relax. It's going to be a quick story, quite furious. But it's a story about what's truly possible to achieve together. And one word that Joris missed out in his introduction is, I know I'm the first person in history stupid enough to have walked to both bloody poles. You've got to be a bit stupid. 900 miles to the south, 700 miles to the north. And if you are that person, and I am, I guarantee you that the man standing here is only sure of four things forever. First and foremost, I'm sure I hate walking. I've done enough. <laughs> Secondly, the coldest day I've ever been in, minus 82, Ice forms inside your clothing. So I'm fairly sure I do not enjoy having ice in my underpants, working on it. Thirdly, no insurance company on earth has got the courage to give me life cover. No one will cover me. And lastly, which I find irritating, most people say to me, before we take on a mission, Rob, you're going to fail. Rob, you're going to die. And I'm here to tell you a story about what you can achieve by being positive. But to reflect back on this morning, at the age of 11, check out my haircut, <laughs> my mother was sick and tired of me saying, I'm going to walk to both poles, Mum. And she said to me when I was 15, a good piece of advice. She said, Rob, if you want to do this, understand one clear thing, that women run everything. It's true, and the story you're about to hear now reflects on that. So it began as a dream. My dream was to walk from the edge of the Antarctica to the South Pole. Quite a big place, Antarctica, if you put the United States of America on it. And three of us undertook this journey. No radio communications. No satellite equipment. 380 pounds on each sledge, nine hours a day, seven days a week, 70 days in a row, and I lost 72 pounds in body weight on this journey. As we march, we must trust each other fully. And here you can see we're walking across crevasses. If those crevasses open up, you go down, you don't come home. Trust, absolutely key. We're now standing in an area the size of the United States of America. And we're entirely on our own. Can't ring up mummy for help on the iPhone 5. We're alone. We're trusting each other. We're standing in this picture on 16,000 feet of solid ice. 90% of all the world's ice is in Antarctica. 70% of all the world's fresh water. Not a good idea if we melt it. And after 70 days on foot, we arrived at the bottom of the world. It was a great moment. We'd done what people said could not be done. And I say, we did it, not me. And we arrived at the South Pole. We had five minutes of celebration at the United States Scientific Station. And then the news came across that our little ship had been crushed by ice five minutes before we arrived at the South Pole. Just the sort of thing you want to hear when you've walked 900 miles in 70 days. Fantastic. Now, my patron for this expedition was a man who I loved and respected more than most, Jacques Cousteau, fantastic guy. And Jacques Cousteau asked me to do something before this expedition. He said, Rob, at the end of your journey, take away all of your garbage, all of your rubbish, leave Antarctica tidy. Bit of a problem, the ship sunk, and I've got 60 tons of equipment on the edge of Antarctica. I think one thing that's very clear about good leadership in life, if you say you're going to do something, do it. And I am proud to say that we stayed another year in Antarctica, Another ship came down, we cleared the rubbish, we did the job. And I'm proud of that. 